Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this old video, we're gonna look at the case of Samira Frisch. Samira was a fashion model. I guess you could say wannabe pop star and a woman who ended up at the bottom of a swimming pool. But how did she get there? I hear you're barking big dog. Well, she didn't swim there. No, no, no. See, she was married to a successful doctor named Adam Frisch who to this day says he loved her to death, would never, ever hurt her. Would he though? So, Samira Frisch, who, she. Born in 1975, Samira was originally from Madagascar, and she would go on to be a high fashion model in Paris. And it's there, while strutting the catwalks, she would meet her future husband, Adam Frisch, in 2006. And it was love at first sight. Apparently. Adam, he was married at the time. This will come up again and again, because he loves not being married, but he also loves being married. But anyway, during this nasty divorce, uh, him and Samira would have a long distance relationship. Samira and Adam would marry in Las Vegas, in 2009, Adam's third marriage, and eventually he would bring Samira over to America. They would move to his home in Tallahassee, Florida, into the um, quite James Bondy villain sounding wealthy, exclusive Golden Eagle community, which definitely doesn't sound like a villain's hideout. They would go on to have two daughters together. Adam spoiled Samira with first class plane tickets to anywhere in the world she wanted to go. And he would fund these really, you know, extravagant shopping sprees where she would go to these, these really expensive stores. The kind of stores where, you know, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. Adam, though, he was a piece of shit. See, shortly before Samira uh, moved to Florida, uh, after they were married, Samira, she had to stay in Europe to just get her affairs in order. And while she was getting her affairs in order, Adam was having an affair. And he had a kid with this other woman. This devastated Samira, who had a miscarriage around that time. Samira, though, she loved, she loved being spoiled, and she wanted her first daughter to be a superstar. Which is weird. I think it's awesome, man. I mean, honestly, the carriage, the baby, the whole thing is just gorgeous. And, and the parents, who is the mother? I, want to, I need to find someone to come in. I want to make videos of my baby. And I, I, I want to travel and make, uh, make sure everybody can see how beautiful my baby is. Also, she was hoping for herself to become the next pop icon. She's fancying herself a bit of a singer. Here's a listen. Uh, okay, let's not listen to that anymore. Let's move on. The highfalutin lifestyle, however, would come splashing down when, at the end of February 2014, 38-year-old Samira would be found dead at the bottom of her swimming pool. Ma'am, can I get an officer out here in Golden Eagle? There's a lady laying in the pool in her backyard in her pool. She did. She was found by a handyman who worked at their home at 11 a.m. And it was quickly ruled a homicide. She was naked, save for a leopard print bathrobe. The autopsy report found she had died as a result of drowning and blunt force trauma to the head. And she had a large bruise on the right side of her forehead and a skull fracture. A specific time of death was inconclusive. What's weird though is that one of the firefighters who pulled her out of the pool said that it didn't look like she'd been in the water that long. Like, 
For example, he said her fingertips, they weren't pruned, you know, like you get after you've been in the water for a while. He said it didn't seem like that. Now, the handyman who found her made no effort to get her out of the pool. He's just like, ah, she's there. He said that, you know, uh, when he found her, he could tell she was already dead, so he didn't want to try and maybe attempt to even save her life. Because he said, I'd get DNA in her. They want to mess up the crime scene. So he obviously fell under suspicion right away. But after a while, police speaking to him, all that jazz, they quickly determined he didn't have anything to do with what happened. But he could give the police some interesting information as to what could have led to Samira's death. Right on. And before we continue hunting this video's killer, I would like to let you know this video is sponsored by Hunt Killer. Hunt a Killer is a subscription service based on a fictional crime. Every month they send you a box of evidence, with the goal being to eliminate suspects and find the real killer. We talk a lot about true crime on this channel, obviously, and this is the game that puts you in the detective's seat. They sent me a season, and honestly it is, it is so much fun staying in, playing it for hours and hours at a time. In the monthly boxes they send you evidence, pictures, videos, audio recordings, reports. Charlie, forget this, please. And you have to put these bits and pieces together, solve codes, formulate timelines, and think outside the box using real world knowledge at times. If you think you'd be interested, please check out hunttokiller.com slash that chapter, and you can get 20% off your first box by using code chapter. Also, part of the proceeds go to the Cold Case Foundation. Every year, 36% of crimes go unsolved, and the Cold Case Foundation works to bring justice, support, and hope to the families affected by violent crime, which I think is relevant to what we talk about here. Once again, that's huntakiller.com slash that chapter, and use code chapter at checkout for 20% off your first box. Thank you so much to Hunt a Killer for making what honestly is a really cool product, and very relevant to what we talk about. All right, back to our regular talking Let's get back to it. So let's take a look at Adam, shall we? See, Adam and Samira were actually in the process of getting a divorce. Samira citing his abuse, excessive gambling, and he was a fierce man for the yellow adultery. Samira was also reportedly refusing to give him custody of their two children. Five months earlier, in September 2013, Samira had been granted by the court temporary sole custody of the children and possession of the Golden Eagle home. The divorce proceedings were not going smoothly, you see. They were marked by accusations on both sides of physical and mental abuse. And Samira's lawyer, her lawyer in the divorce proceedings, said he even began carrying around a gun because he was scared of Adam. He said, you know, out of all the people he's ever, you know, been on the other side of the aisle from, I guess, he considered Adam the most volatile and dangerous. So, yeah. Six months before her death, Samira was arrested on a domestic battery charge for allegedly scratching her husband's neck and threatening to kill him. Prosecutors ended up dropping the charge. Also around that time, six months before Samira was murdered, Adam also filed a stalking injunction against another unnamed, unknown woman. Presumably one of his mistresses. That might come up again. Just briefly. And so, with all of this, the police were like, Ugh, wonder! Who could have killed her, and why they would have killed her. However, Adam and the two kids weren't at the house that day. At least they weren't when the police showed up. And so, when the police finally did track him and the children down, in Panama City, by the way, about two hours away, in another house he owned, before the police could even ask Adam a question, the first thing he said was, Is my wife dead? Maybe. Interesting choice of words. Should she be? Adam also had a big old scratch under his eye. He told the police him and Samira were actually getting back together, reconciling. The divorce looks like it's getting called off, lads. Or at least that's what he would say if he wants to look like he wouldn't have a grudge against the woman who was just killed. Samira was probably going to take everything from him had the divorce finally gone through. So Adam said, yeah, me and the kids, they were there last night, you know, before uh, Samira drowned. And, you know, we've stayed up. Samira, she got in a bit of a tiff. We had a bit of an argument. She started drinking, but we went to bed at about 4 a.m. Then, that morning, I got up early, I took the two kids with me, and we, we jetted off for today. You know, we wanted to give uh, Samira some, you know, a mommy's day off. I thought doctors were supposed to be smart because he sounds like a fucking idiot. 
So he said him and the kids, they left the house in Golden Eagle at 8 a.m. No idea what happened to Samira after that. It wouldn't be until 11 a.m. that she was found. It was also weird that he took the kids with him because he wasn't legally allowed to do that. See, they were in the middle of a divorce and as I said, a judge had given Samira sole custody. But of course, oh, Adam said, you know, that divorce is being called off by death. A neighbor did see Adam leaving that morning around the time he said he left about 8 a.m. However, another neighbor, a separate neighbor, was walking in Golden Eagle at the time. And she said she saw a woman who looked like Samira or possibly Samira herself after Adam had left the house. Interesting. 46 year old Adam was then arrested. Well, arrested for interfering with the custody of the children. He later posted bond on the condition that he have no contact with the kids, not possess any weapons, wear a GPS monitor, surrender his US passport, and have no contact with the attorneys associated with his wife. So a toxicology report was done, and it was found that Adam lied. No shit. There was no alcohol found in Samira's body at all, so she wasn't drinking, got drunk, and fell in. Adam's DNA was also found under her fingernails, so. Investigators also found that Adam was under investigation for Medicare fraud. Millions of dollars of Medicare fraud. Authorities were then able to get a warrant to investigate his offices from this news. And they found a gun there. Oh no, Adam, according to conditions of your release, you're not allowed to own a gun. Back to jail, dummy. I think this was the cop's idea from the very start, to try and keep Adam locked up as, you know, as long as possible while they got their ducks in a row, so they would have enough stuff to convict him. And so things, uh, even before his wife died, murdered, weren't looking good for Adam. Uh, Samira was gonna take everything in the divorce. He would lose a lot of money, his house, his kids, and was being investigated for millions of dollars of fraud. I wonder what a man in that situation would do. Could soon be filed against a Leon County man suspected of murdering his wife. Despite his attorney's effort to win his release, Adam Frash remains in the Leon County Jail today on charges of custodial interference. He, however, has been found incompetent to stand trial. Frash has also been named a suspect in his wife's death. Samira Frash was found dead in February in the family's home swimming pool in Leon County. Assistant State Attorney Georgia Kappelman tells us the homicide investigation into Samira's death is ongoing, and they hope to take the case to a grand jury sometime in the near future. That is when charges could possibly be filed against Adam Frash. Meanwhile, we're looking. He then decided for one reason or another to write an open letter to the people of Tallahassee. Let's give it a read. I cannot begin to tell honest, God-fearing persons the daily horrors of an overcrowded jail with poor food, constant noise, frequent fights, and dozens of mentally ill and drug-addled inmates always trying to pick a fight with you over the smallest things. It is a nightmare. I have been maligned in the press, characterized as an incompetent person separated from my children and not allowed to grieve for my wife. I have lost my freedom and my dear clients in my Thomasville podiatry office have lost their physician over innuendos and half-truths at best. I did not murder the mother of my two babies. Sincerely, Adam Frasch. Then the turning point really came when Adam was back in jail, you know, after the police found a gun that he wasn't allowed to own. Back in jail. He's such an Egypt because in jail he started talking to a man named Dale Folsom, who was a rat. He said that Samira had come home and confronted him about some of the other women he had been seeing. It's thought Samira may have been sold a sex tape of Adam and one of his mistresses. Buy that mistress for $4,000. Why Samira would have bought that, I have no idea. The fight then turned physical, and before he could process what was happening, his wife was unresponsive on the floor. Oh no, I just blacked out. What happened? He then put her in the pool to try and remove any of his DNA that would be on her. Not sure if that's how it works. And Samira wasn't dead when he put her in the water. And so Adam was indicted on a first degree murder charge. 
Funnily enough, there was, as there always is, a life insurance policy on Samira worth um, one million dollars. So a lot of money. It granted two hundred thousand to Adam's criminal defense attorney, twenty-five thousand dollars to a civil attorney, and a further one hundred and fifty thousand dollars was granted directly to Adam. The rest went to their daughters. So Adam used life insurance from his murdered wife to pay for his defense against him murdering her. Right. Adam Frosch no longer faces the death penalty if found guilty for the murder of his wife last February. That's according to our media partners, the Tallahassee Democrat. The Thomasville podiatrist was in court this morning. He signed an agreement to drop the death penalty in exchange for being tried before a jury of six, not 12 people. Frosch is accused of murdering his estranged wife, Samira. His trial was set to begin next month, but has been postponed after defense attorneys asked the judge for a continuance. The officers that interviewed the defendant noticed that he had some scratches on his body. Most notably, and you were asked about this, jury selection. This scratch to his eye, just under his eye. And he indicates that the baby was the one that gave him that scratch. Um, so he says the baby did this, but as part of the autopsy, fingernail scrapings and clippings were taken from the victim, and those were sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement where they were analyzed by a DNA expert. And those results were that Samra Frosch had her husband's DNA under her left hand fingernails. And while there was no injury to her genital area, they also do a sexual assault kit. Um, his semen was found both in her vagina and in her anus. And when the victim's blood was tested as part of the autopsy results, um, they test the blood and the urine and the vitreous, which is the fluid inside the eyeball, for the presence of alcohol. She was completely negative, zero alcohol. A woman that was up at 4 a.m. drunk had no alcohol in her system. All of these things will point you to a single verdict. There is only one verdict in this case that will speak the truth, and that is a verdict of guilty as charged. The issue in this case for you to decide is not only what killed Ms. Frosch, but when was she killed? Because the evidence will show without question that from 8 a.m., on the morning of the 22nd of February 2014, my client, Dr. Frosch, was not in Golden Eagle, was not in the house, and wasn't around the swimming pool. The body is found at 11 a.m., some three hours after Dr. Frosch leaves his residence. The medical examiner is going to testify that she cannot pinpoint the time of death. If any of you, me, anyone in this room have ever been in a bathtub, a swimming pool, the Gulf of Mexico, a river or the ocean, for more than 20, 30 or 40 minutes, what happens to your fingers? They wrinkle. What happens to your toes? They wrinkle. Medical examiner is going to testify she found no evidence of wrinkling on either the feet or the fingers of the deceased. The trial proceeded slowly. Adam was deemed mentally incompetent because of an untreated bipolar disorder and so had to be put on medication for a while. The evidence in this case has shown that Samra Frosch was brutally beaten and then callously tossed into the pool where she met her death. The case has seemed to boil down to who done it. Was this the defendant that committed this callous act or was it some unknown killer? And I would submit to you that everything about this crime tells you that this was a very 
personal crime. Domestic violence is always about power and control. And the defense has told you that in the days leading up to Sam Rafrash's murder, they were reconciling. Things were going well. But the evidence has shown the complete opposite. The defendant and Sam Rafrash had been in a battle. And it appeared that at the time of Mrs. Frosch's death, she was winning. The tables had turned in her favor in this battle. She had been awarded the house, the kids, alimony, child support, attorney's fees. You must use your common sense in determining all of this stuff, and we gave you a lot. And it's up to you to decide what weight to give certain pieces of evidence. But we know that she was brutally beaten and thrown in that pool. And all of the evidence points not to a mystery killer, but to this defendant. This was a personal crime. And who had the motive to kill this woman? Based on everything you know about their lives. Only one person. Hard evidence that we suggest to you <laughs> clearly leaves reasonable doubt after reasonable doubt after reasonable doubt in this case. I suggest to you the key issue is when did Mrs. Frosch pass? How long had she been in that pool? We can talk about speculation, and, oh, they might have had an argument, or oh, they might have had this said that, oh, she might not have given the kids permission on other occasions to go off with her husband. But when did she die? And proof beyond a reasonable doubt in this case details specifically the time of death. What proof do we have that she was in the pool before 8 a.m.? No confident evidence of that. None. Scientific evidence says no. The verdict in this case should back that up. We're asking for you to return a verdict that speaks the truth because the case hasn't been proven. The defendant has not been proven guilty in this case. Not guilty. Thank you very much for your time. On January 26, 2017, Adam Frasch was found guilty of killing his wife and sentenced to life in prison. State of Florida versus Adam Price, we the jury find as follows as the indictment, the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. So say we all this 26th day of January 2017. Adam still maintains his innocence. Nope, didn't do it. I am innocent. Late in 2019, he appealed and his conviction was upheld. Now, most of his appeal consisted of, not fully, but a lot of it did, on the fact that, remember how I said six months before Samira was murdered, he had filed a stalking injunction against some woman, we don't know her name, presumably one of his mistresses. Well, that was never told to the jury. And so, this kind of appeal and a defensive round it was that Adam, he's a patsy. He's, he's been framed by somebody else. Some other woman killed Samira. Adam is innocent. They're walking scot-free while Adam is sentenced to life in prison. The judge found this to be, uh, quote, let me get you the quote, speculative in nature. But what is interesting is that Adam left the house three hours before Samira was found. When Samira's body was taken out of the water, a firefighter said it didn't look like she had been in the water for that long. Her fingers, they weren't proved. And a time of death was never found. It was inconclusive. And there's also the fact that a neighbor saw a woman looking like Samira, possibly even Samira herself, after Adam had left the house. So, what do you think? Do you think it's pretty obvious he did it? Or is there more to this case? Then meets die. And finally, thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out. <laughs>